So if you're interested in exploring a city that's equal parts mystery and magic, then please partake in this beautiful adventure that we have laid before you, brought to you by Vicarious Ventures. Hello adventurers and welcome to the very first episode of Waterdeep Dragon Heist. I'm your host and guide, David the Water Davian, the director of magic and the DM for this particular campaign. Thank you so much for joining in and watching this video. This is our first episode in a very long and robust series that is set in the city of Waterdeep, which is a fantastic place with a lot of different lore that's set in the Forgotten Realms. The problem is that campaign is very bare bones when you come with just what's provided by Wizards of the Coast and their, their adventure, their module. So what we did was we ran a very special version of it called the Alexandrian Remix, which puts the heist back into Dragon Heist. So you're gonna see not just one, not two, but four villains from spring, summer, autumn, and winter all ran at the same time, set within this cool sandbox of a city that has been totally fleshed out. And we're gonna water deep dive into the lore of the Forgotten Realms and see if our characters can solve Never Ember's Enigma. And if you guys are interested in watching that, you can skip ahead right now to the timestamp below to skip right to where we go into the cinematics. For everybody else, Maybe people who aren't familiar with D&D or people that are familiar with D&D but want to see what kind of rules I'm using for this campaign, stick around. So I won't spend too much time on this intro, but I do want you guys to know that if you are a fan of funny voices... Do you not see the curtains, boy? What accent is that? What are you talking about? It's a Sun Elf accent. <laughs> it seems like you guys are adventurers. I need to know if you're the right type. I look back at Snake and I'm like, well, of course we could help, but uh, our prices aren't cheap. Do you think you could do this Perfect. for me, Fia? There's a cold word you must yeah. use for him. Tell me the clave. The phrase is, where's Waldo? The streets. So, the streets that are above the sewers. The sewers that are designed specifically <laughs> to be below the streets. The streets. The, uh, yeah, the, those streets. A fan of dad jokes. I bet you're after my charms, aren't you? They're always oh, after me, lucky charms. <laughs> you see, ah, we, we make skate at the boulder. Boulder skate. They drink Plasmic. the Kool Aid, you might say. It's, these are ghouls, though, so it might be more like a, like a Ghoul Aid, really. So. Oh my um, God. <laughs> he says this. Do you feel in charge? I do. It's very <laughs> validating of you to notice that. Thank you. Your mom likes when I'm in charge too. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Oh, a fan of creative monsters. As something bursts through the wall and says, "Yeah," and the Son large a man. Oh no. Do it. <laughs> and there's there's. <laughs> Thanks for a save there, big man. What do we call you? That's Bigfoot Lebowski. <laughs> <laughs> or just a fan of unique combat, then this is the show for you. Now, if you're new to Dungeons and Dragons, all you really need to know is that this is like improv comedy and I'm the one who's directing all of my actors and I am painting the picture. But if you want to know the D&D rules, there are uh, rules posted down below in the description, but I'll also have a separate video that you can watch. And if you check the description, or check this link right here. It'll take you to a video of me explaining the rules to you of how I run Dungeons and Dragons. It's a very short video. It's not deep diving into anything. It's just giving you a basic primer and what's going on so you're not totally confused. Um, for those of you who do know uh, the way that D&D works, I have also another video that you can watch that explains my combat system and my slingshot initiative system, which I think is very intuitive and a lot of my homebrew rules I think that you'll also enjoy. But just as a quick primer, if you want to see those rules, I'll put a graphic up right now and you can pause it if you want and just read through all the rules that I did. Probably one of the biggest rules changes that I did was the fact that everybody starts with a feat, not just variant humans. So it's not just everybody's a boring human. You actually get to start out with a feat and be a very customized, individualized character and play the race that you want to play and really role play more than you would with just a human because humans are kind of boring. We're already humans, we're in a fantasy world. Let's try to pick something a little bit more exotic. The other thing is, we also had some players that don't get introduced right away. You'll notice that I introduced the first three players right off the bat in a very like cinematic and albeit sort of lengthy and purple prosy kind of way. But um, we don't exactly get to those characters right off the bat. Technically, Scott's character does make an appearance, but he decides not to reveal himself. And that's something that I allow my players to do. I give them an agency to introduce their characters when and how they want to, and it builds a little bit of suspense. So we will see Scott and Ian pilot some characters, but they're gonna take control of a couple of halflings that are in the bar in the initial scenes. We also had a character who had to kind of drop out. She's in there for the first few, but hopefully we can get her back. Um, that's our shadow sorceress, Fia, 
who is becoming controlled by Barbara. And uh, she is uh, hopefully going to be joining us later, but I'm not sure if she will. She has a very interesting backstory that is tied into kind of like a Game of Thrones level of political intrigue. So I really hope that we can get her back in the saddle again once we get a little bit further along in the campaign. But for now, we're going to introduce her and then we might not see her again later until after she's done with this mission that she's been given by Mert. Now, quick note before we start, you may hear some hiccups in the audio. Uh, we did have good audio hardware, but unfortunately my computer was not strong enough. But rest assured, the audio issues do get fixed. They're actually not that bad. I'm just very nitpicky and I love really clean, crisp audio. But I did upgrade my computer hardware for future sessions and uh, the audio issues should be totally resolved. The other thing to note is that uh, this is my first time DMing. So I tried my best to make this a very cinematic intro and it's a little bit lengthy at the beginning, a little bit purple prosy, if you will. But I was a little bit nervous. It was my first time doing it. And so I tried to stick to a script, but it was a little bit difficult. And it, it does add a little bit of extra time introducing everybody. But I didn't want to just do that basic kind of thing where everybody just goes around the horn and they say, I play this character and I play this character and I play this character. There'll be an infographic that's next to them as they get introduced. You can check that out. And I also do have a little section where uh, everybody introduces themselves. And I'll probably play that now or I'll play that a little bit later. Check those out and uh, enjoy. Thank you, guys. As you enter the city, you catch your first glimpse of the legendary city of Waterdeep, the crown of the north, the city of splendors. Nestled along the Sword Coast on the western shores of Faerun, this storied metropolis stands as a testament to the grandeur of civilization and the resilience of its inhabitants. Renowned far and wide as the City of Splendors, Waterdeep weaves a tapestry of intrigue, adventure, and ancient secrets within its labyrinthine streets. In the springtime, Waterdeep is embraced by the morning mists. Like ethereal dancers, they gracefully roll in, in from the deep water harbor, their delicate tendrils embracing the cobblestone streets and stirring whispers of opportunity and untold treasures. Within its bustling wards, the spirit of adventure thrives, mingling with the sense of blooming flowers and the harmonious chatter of diverse tongues. The city serves as a melting pot of cultures that draws merchants, scholars, and adventurers from distant lands. But now, as the clock strikes noon, the midday sun bathes the wards in a radiant glow, and the city awakens as you weave through its most famous landmarks and follow a path beckoning you towards the legendary Yawning Portal Inn. The Yawning Portal, an iconic gathering place, stands as a revered haven for seasoned adventurers and wide-eyed newcomers alike. Its weathered stone facade bears witness to the countless tales over hearty meals and flagons of ale. Here in the warm embrace of its hallowed halls, an aura of camaraderie, camaraderie and anticipation fills the air. As you step through its doors, you know that your journey truly begins, your destiny entwined with the countless heroes who have gathered before you. And you guys should now be seeing kind of like a, a rendition of the outer, outer portion of the Yawning Portal Inn. It's located in the castle ward of the city which is right next to actually the, the old castle where the nobility actually really doesn't live. That's kind of like their, the big fort that they live in. Every, all the nobility actually, the royalty actually lives in the castle, uh, the, the palace that's north. But anyways, the Yawning Portal is like right there. You can see a lot of the big landmarks of the city and there's a whole street full of like uh, different taverns. And this so happens to be one of the most infamous ta taverns. So let me show you a little bit of interior view of the Yawning Portal. As you can see on your new handouts, there's three different levels to the Yawning Portal. It has a lot of verticality to it. The big selling point is the, the well that's in the middle. And uh, there's three tiers um, to this. And there's different, uh, it's like an inn. So there's a lot of people that stay here. Uh, they, get, they get food down in the tavern and then they, they come up and they have these private parties. There's like these little kind of screened off areas where if you want to have a private meeting, you can do it while still being in this kind of gathering hub. So everybody can see that uh, very busy looking Where's Waldo-esque picture, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's well, some... Where is Waldo? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. you'll have to find out. 
<laughs> you guys are gonna come across an embassy named Waldo, and you're just gonna lose it. You're like, there he is. Get him. We found him. <laughs> We're fucking dragging him around, to everybody. <laughs> So I'm also going to show you guys a little interior shot here as well. So you can kind of see kind of the ambiance of the yawning portal. There's the uh, there's the signature well in the middle of the the tavern, and then they have like this kind of this uh, these fireplaces that kind of look like a like a troll or like a like an orc, depending on where it is in the room. They're different creatures, and they're all yawning, yelling as the fire <laughs> burns in their mouth. So pretty cool kind of hangout spot. They, they're eating good there. They got the. Uh, it's not your normal pub food. I mean, if you guys want to know, there is a menu. So. <laughs> so, like, oh, are yeah. tentacles extra? I wouldn't That's recommend okay. the tentacles because of uh, one of our party members. <laughs> he's a. He's not a freaky fish guy, but, he, you know, they would be if he was eating his own kind. I don't know. Are calamari on the menu for. He calls himself makeup? a fisherman. Yep. I yeah, fish. but fish is, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It's You guys yeah, have to find yeah. out, I guess. Okay, so everybody's got <laughs> pictures of the, the yawning portal? Okay, great. Now, as you step in to the yawning portal, your gaze is immediately drawn to the expansive common room that dominates the ground floor. Within this spacious chamber, the true marvel of the tavern unfolds. A colossal 40-foot diameter open well. This enigmatic chasm, which is in fact the outer shell of a sunk a sunken stone tower, plunges an astonishing 140 feet into the depths of the Undermountain, the sprawling dungeon that lies beneath Waterdeep. A rope and pulley mechanism stands at the ready, its purpose is clear, to tower to lower intrepid adventurers into the well's abyss and hoist them back into the realm of light. As you sit in the tavern, you may speak with Durnin, who's the Grizzled proprietor of the yawning portal. Let me uh, show you guys a picture of, D of Durnan. So there should be a picture of Durnan leaning on the uh, the bar counter. Durnan got... looks like the exact person I want to be in 20 years. <laughs> He's got the <laughs> the mustache. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis, his new his new name. Forget Durnan. Is Daniel. <laughs> His, his real name is Daniel, but he goes by Durnin. So, yeah, as you guys, as you guys, um, you guys have been to this location before. Um, some of you, it's been a long time. It's been a decade or so. Some, a couple people, it's been more than a decade. But everybody kind of knows the Yawning Portal. And uh, you know that there's Durnin. He's the, uh, he's the grizzled proprietor of the Yawning Portal. And here's a description on him, okay? He commands a presence that echoes with the weight of a storied past. Despite the appearance of a middle-aged man whose prime is long since past, there is a sharpness to his gaze and a strength that lingers beneath his weathered exterior. This retired adventurer has ventured down into the depths of the Undermountain, emerging with a small fortune that he used to build this very tavern and a profound connection to the enigmatic labyrinth below. A shroud of mystery envelopes Sternin, and he remains tight-lipped. I'm still thinking about the Daniel Day-Lewis thing. <laughs> <laughs> And he remains tight-lipped about his past exploits, re refusing to divulge the secrets of his adventuring days. In fact, despite having no elven ancestry, it seems that Durnin hasn't aged a day since he left the Undermountain all those years ago. The Yawning Portal is his sanctuary, a place where he has built refuge atop the very mouth of the Undermountain. The Call of the Depths is an unyielding siren song, a force that binds him to this location, enabling him to listen to the whispers and echoes of an ever-shifting Undermountain, even from afar. With an air of gruff authority, Durnan safeguards the inns and his patrons. A man of few words, he employs a dark sense of humor that spares no pity for those who dare to venture into the treacherous depths of the Undermountain. Durnan stands as a silent sentinel, his presence a testament to the dangers that lurk below and the unquenchable allure of adventure. Welcome to the Yawning Portal, where his watchful gaze oversees the gateway to wonders and perils untold. So as you guys, as you guys are in this bar, uh, and you look behind the counter where Durnan is. Let's let's go to the yawning portal here. Let's go to the map. By the way, I like the fact that this guy went down to the to this well deep underneath, and he found a fortune. And his big idea was to just build a bar around. Right the on top of it. And then, 
That is amazing. I actually do want to be Dernan. It actually is a good business model <laughs> because um, although he had like this, all these treasures, he decided to actually build right on top of the portal, which used to just be a well. And actually back in the day, they would just kind of banish people. It was like a punishment to get down in the Undermountain. Nobody would go down there. You'd have to be crazy to go down there. But this guy actually went down there and came back. And uh, the Undermountain is constantly shifting and everything. So it's like, you can't just go down there and follow the same path that he did. This is constantly getting restocked with new treasures. And uh, it's actually continuously expanded over the years. So he's uh, he charges one gold piece for adventurers to go down into the depths of the, the Undermountain. And they can try to get... Steal. Yeah. I mean, is it a steal or is he just getting a gold piece every time a guy decides to die? It also I'm costs. Thinking, if you know that they're gonna die, I would charge more than one gold for it, right? Like it... get as much as you can. What are they gonna do? Come back and ask for it back? <laughs> no, they're not. It also back. costs a gold. It costs solid. two gold <laughs> to come back up. to use the hoist. So <laughs> he's got a he's got a business model. But essentially, he makes pretty good money off of the tavern because I mean, this he makes all of his money. It's not. It's kind of like when you go to the movies and there's they make all their money off the pop, you know, the concessions and stuff like that. You know, to 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 see the show is not where they make the money, but it's the fact that he's he runs the tavern. Everybody stays there. It's a gathering hub for all the adventurers and everything. Everybody hmm? at the yawning portal here can get along. We got a tea. I'm gonna reload mine. Mixing in with some elves, some and goblins, some yeah. goblins. There's there's yeah, there's, there's no all sorts of crazy shit out. in there. It's a melting pot of people, that's some, for sure. It's a big, big old family. I love it. Let's just throw some alcohol with all these mixed, mixed <laughs> species. <laughs> I also love that they're just. I still see the whole, same page. A whole boar with some hmm. cinnamon rolls on the same. side. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it looks like it's starting to load. That Jason Statham hanging out with a bunch of dwarves. <laughs> you can see that. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's such a small image. How could you tell that it's definitely Jason Statham? How could you tell that? But who are these people? We got 60 tokens on here. This man finds... It's like, a, it's like a fantasy version. By the way, if you guys want to see tokens and you press the Z button, the Z, Z will make it pop up so you can see even more clearly. Can you guys... Can you guys... He's got a little bit of Bruce Willis in him, too. Can you see that now? I was thinking Jason Statham. So when I hit it, when it, so yeah, before you, okay. Oh, look, the thing's working. Jason Statham, you've done it. The transporter, you've transported <laughs> us to the yawning portal. God bless you. <laughs> All right, uh, so yeah. So this actually, rep so there's actually three levels to this. Like being back home. Yeah, man, well, this, this is a pretty happening place. This, this place is pretty sweet, I'm not gonna lie. Like if I had an adventuring bar, it would be something like this. It's pretty exciting. It's like the danger of Hogwarts, kind of, where it's like you could die. Also, <laughs> like you go to you go here, just like you know, we go to school and we get attacked by monsters and basilisks and stuff. Spoiler alert: <laughs> it's pipes. There's a giant pipe right there. There could be a basilisk that comes out of here. Nope, I think we're all good. All right, so Jason Statham, Daniel Day Lewis, and Johnny Depp walk into a bar, <laughs> <laughs> and then the bar I shuts have, down because uh... of a lawsuit. What? How did that happen with the dark hole thing and all the NPCs in the well now? Did I miss something? Wait, do you, all the Hold NPCs on a second. Are in the hole for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are. One, one sec, let me. They're all in the well now. What the don't, all right, don't say on? anything, Cade. Cade, just stay right there. I'm coming for you. Everybody sit tight. Cade went to the well? <laughs> <laughs> Scott, how do you pronounce your character's name? Czar! Like the Russians. Czar. Oh, ironically. Zar. You shouldn't be able to do that very well considering your accent you've decided to employ. <laughs> all right, we're all good. There was there was actually nothing wrong. It was just on Cade's end. It was all you had to do was refresh the page. And it was just some of the characters got shit like the map got shifted up. Because like I didn't know if the people got pushed into the well or something, and I missed that. While Don't they worry, that's just <laughs> that was just the those oh was the gosh. children. <laughs> so like goes over in the corner now, and I'm like, wait, why am I over here? Just like sacrificing the kids in the well or something. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. I mean, that. Don't worry about like these the guys right here. Do anything, all the they're, die. they're just these three <laughs> small street urchins. No one will miss them. They're orphans. 
So before we talk about the bar area, um, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick snapshot of the yawning portal in general. So we're on the, the first level here where you got the, the bar area to the left. You got the big old well with the, with the winch and crane and all that stuff. Uh, if you guys wanna go upstairs, you can go upstairs. We'll just have to like, you know, put your character up there and I'll have to just kind of switch between the, the viewpoints. But there's no real need to go up to the upstairs unless you want to get like a higher view. Drop something from the top floor or something like that. I don't know. Don't drop. Just don't drop like any body. urchins. <laughs> just like a small child. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> all right. So you guys saw all the different levels to the yawning portal. Um, you're just getting settled in. It's very important when you guys look uh, just past the wall. So I'll kind of like ping the location behind Dern in there is a large placard, a wooden placard, and it says a little mantra there with the... It, first of all, it's got Dernan's famous sword mounted on the wall. Steel is sharp as the edge of death. And above it is a little wooden placard that reads a word of warning to all the patrons. In the yawning portal, all is well. But draw thy weapon, and tales will quell. No bloodshed here, no violent spell. Put away thy steel, lest you fare well. And it's essentially a warning that anybody who draws weapons and fights with weapons in this establishment will get booted out, including magic. So no, no violent spell and put away thy steel. Okay. Uh, just, just so you know, these babies. you can do whatever <laughs> no, you want, no, but no, put no, away no, the no, guns. Right. Slappers only. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, you can, you can do it to, in, in theory, you guys can do whatever you want, but in practice, you're level one, and I, I wouldn't go there. <laughs> um, so yeah, Dernan, Dernan basically has a policy that uh, anybody's allowed in the pub, uh, even if you're one of those crazy Xanathar zealots or whatever, it doesn't really matter who you are. Um, unless, of course, you're friends with the hob Hobgoblin, then he'll throw you down the well himself. He hates gob Hobgoblins. So Dernan hates Hobgoblins? Hates Hobgoblins, not a fan. Good thing nobody in this party had to be a Hobgoblin. <laughs> Cause that would have been that would have been interesting. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, species. Goblins, cool. Hobgoblins, dirty, weird. They control the monetary system. The hobgoblins are actually the the more intelligent ones. They're kind of like lead the like the leader of the goblins essentially. So, okay, so we're gonna start with our first introduction now that we kind of been uh, oriented a little bit for you guys. With the racism of the owner. Continue. <laughs> hey, isn't everything Before against orcs? So, in within the heart of the bustling yawning portal inn, a figure stands apart from the lively crowd. You can see him right here. Sitting at the bar okay. is a rugged half orc with a canvas of green skin. The proud scars that adorn his muscular form are testament to the battles won in an unforgiving crucible of the arena of blood. Over his broad shoulder rests a large shield. Let me see if I give you guys some um, artwork here. Oh, that's the. There's, well, that's the only fangs art. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't see, didn't see that. Uh, and with that, we have our first check of the campaign. It's a vibe check. Once. <laughs> that's funny. Let me. Uh, it's funny that your regular art was not geared in there, but the only fangs was. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Sitting at the bar is a rugged half orc with a canvas of green skin. The proud scars that adorn his muscular form a testament to the battles won in the unforgiving crucible of the arena of blood. Over his broad shoulder rests a large shield, its surface etched with the history of countless confrontations, and a well worn long sword rests at his hip. This is Herc, a warrior forged in the fires of the Colosseum, his heart aflame with determination. As Bonnie the barmaid, who is right here, by the way, pours him another drink. You guys see Bonnie, by the way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As Bonnie the barmaid pours him a drink with a smile, Herc seems preoccupied, his fingers fidgeting with a golden bracer on his wrist as he looks towards the door. Unbeknown to most, the bracer is a symbol of his triumph in the Colosseums of Kalimbor, a golden monocle with an embossed skull on it a mark bestowed upon the champion of the brutal arena he emerged from. Ironically, it matches the orc skull pendant he has kept safe all these years, the same orcish necklace that his mother gave him with her last dying breath when his village was attacked all those years ago. I added that little bit of, I kill, sorry I killed your mom, Herc. 
<laughs> it just seemed. <laughs> It okay, seemed to fit down. with the, you know, oh my I mean, gosh. you you have the skull necklace, so it, it was apropos. Wow. Oh, gosh. Sorry so about that. broken up. My I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I had to do it for this. Everybody's got to have a tragic backstory and there were like no deaths yet. So I had to kill your parents. I mean, Mako's, Mako's parents are like MIA. We're not sure if they're KIA, but your mom's definitely dead. I'm cool with it. But you got that cool. You got that cool necklace. I mean. Kirk's not cool with it. I'm cool with it. <laughs> right. Well, it's, it was a while ago, and you're, you've, 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 a lot's happened since then. So. I don't know. Maybe uh, Kirk killed the parents. Who knows? Kirk's eyes remained fixed on the entrance, anticipating the arrival of Yagra Stonefist. A decade has passed since their shared captivity at the hands of the Xanathar Guild, a chapter of life he seeks to close, for he carries with him not only the memory of chains and betrayal. But the fervent oath that he swore to the Faerunian god of Hor, deity of retribution and poetic justice. That's H O A R, by the way. Just for the viewers at home. Um, as the crowd swirls How around. You a vibe check? <laughs> it's it's the god of Hor, you know, it's the god of balance and <laughs> justice, you know? They're called sex workers. It's this is canon. I looked at the hey, Faerunian pan pantheon. That way. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty whore, deity. I'm so sorry. So as we talked about the the canon god known as whore, which is you know I, I believe it's like a sub. You have like a subservient <laughs> sort of like right. like like an archangel kind of like it, it's a, it's a middleman. <laughs> Here it's, do the, do yeah. The, do the spicy boy pronunciation. He was he was like no. This seems <laughs> like a good god. Yeah. <laughs> When you were yeah, first praying, you're like, this this guy sounds good. Horror. Yeah. No no relation. It sounded good in your far eastern tongue. So I get to, I get to water deep and everybody's just like, oh, you mean whore? Like, <laughs> oh, who? You're a paladin of, a paladin of what? You want whore, right? So whore? as the... <laughs> I mean, it's yes, a... but also... <laughs> you got vengeance. You want vengeance, you ask the whore. <laughs> also called the Lord of the Lord of Three Thunders. You, you, gotta, you gotta you gotta get ready for that thunder clap. Thunder clap in them cheeks. Oh my gosh. No, so as the curl, as the crowd swirls around him ordering drinks and clattering tankards, Herc's focus remains unbroken, guys. Remember how his focus remained unbroken? <laughs> uh, his heart is echoing with oath. That he's held within for so long, remembering the words of the th Lord of Three Thunderclaps, as, as he is known. He heard all those years ago when his village was raided. Violence repays violence. Evil repays evil. Good repays good. And Herc embodies those words. Ten years he's waited, honing his strength, his determination, and his thirst for vengeance against the Ga the Xanathar Guild. And it's not a it's not a thirst that can be quenched with a mere ale. But he drinks one, nonetheless. Yagra's return, her presence, signifies more than just a reunion of captives. It marks the first steps towards a reckoning that's been a decade in the making. All right, so uh, with that, we're going to go into Herc. Is there anything you'd like to do? Would you like to order an ale from the from the menu when we're starting here? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to be shooting the shit with Bonnie here. Be like, yeah. um, Bonnie, how many uh, drunk bastards have fallen into the hole tonight? <laughs> oh, you know, only a few. <laughs> uh, Ain't nothing. Coming here on a Thursday, watching them stumble around. They, they know they're not <laughs> coming back, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, wells aren't really made for stumblers, I guess. You would you like to get oh yourself a, another drink there, darling? Uh, yes, please. Uh, make it a double. Oh, sure thing, sweetie. Would you like to see the menu? <laughs> sweetie. He's he's a real softy. No, I just did it not too long ago. I'll, I'll just take the drinks. Thank you. Oh, I was gonna, he's, he's gonna give you the drink menu here. So, let's see. Oh, it yeah. is right. He was already drinking, so the the lady would just give him twice I mean, as I was, much. Drink. I was eyeing that boar on the other table. I'm like, that's way too much for me, man. I gotta too much boar. 
gotta watch my calories. Man. I'm just seeing what 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 is what is he drinking here. So I'm gonna share this with, this with you guys. Show to players. So you should be seeing a menu. That is the fanciest menu for the most scumbag bar I've ever heard of. They got budget. <laughs> so as you guys see, they got a lot of different. You can get just about anything in Waterdeep, and um, but if you really know one of five things. But if you ask Bonnie or someone who's like a, a freak who frequents here, you might be able to ask see what's uh, actually like the uh, the du jour menu, the, uh, the the item of the day, whatever you call it, you know, the happy hour special kind of thing. So, yeah. anyways, so but so, yeah, we I guess we don't have the drinks on there, but uh, that's cool. You know, you're just drinking that uh, Orca Shale, man. And like as you look around too, like uh, as you're waiting for um, Yagra to show up, you notice that Dernan is he's kind of preoccupied. He's uh he's kind of arguing a little. He's he's having like a very fervent discussion with uh, uh looks to be like a half gnome kind of half dwarf. He's like a Durger, which is the one of the dark dwarves, but he's also kind of like a half gnome. He has features of both. He's got the beard and everything. He seems to be kind of going at it with Dernan. Something about um not allowing experimental drinks on the menu, and you know he has to serve this to the people and uh some something about uh you know. Seems like he's like trying to offer him some extra options for the, what's on the menu, and he he notices that you you order you know everybody's ordering the same kind of drinks, and he's like trying to talk to him about something. It sounds like a business pitch. He's trying to give him like a proposal on how to like spice up the menu a little bit, but Dern is not really having much of it. I, I'd offer to help uh, if this guy's giving Dern in trouble, but I know that Dern is very strictly yeah, nonviolent. Yeah, so Dern looks. Are you looks guys, pretty, are uh, guys talking about the guy who looks like uh, who looks like that doc, that that uh, Doctor Seuss character with the with the beard? Rex. <laughs> yeah. Daniel Day Lewis. I'm thinking Papa Smurf or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's some mix of that. That's who you're talking about. Is this guy's giving shit to giving shit to my main man, Jordan. Yep. He's he seems to be like uh, he, he has several uh, fizzing concoctions in his hand as he's speaking and they're kind of like spilling around as they spill around. There's there's little swirl, little magical swirls that seem to be kind of popping up as he's like gesturing around. He's like, no, they're good. They're good. And he like he tilts them back. He's drinking them himself to show that they're they're good. And Dernan's like, I'm, you know, basically looks like he's just, you know, would rather be anywhere else right now than talking with this dwarf. So <laughs> this half dwarf, half orc. Okay. So. Or half, um, half gnome, and he's up. You know, he's just up there on the counter. So up with, by the way, up with the rest of you guys. There's, um, there's also some other patrons at the bar as well. There's, uh, some three halflings that are sitting at the bar. Um, I think I pinged them. Did I not ping them? One of them's got a ring of power, don't they? <laughs> uh, oh, I'm not on the right layer. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna okay. fuck up Frodo. Where's my character? So they're kind of like. The they're no, they're on the first floor oh, here. The their legs part. are their legs are kind of just swinging around there a little bit. So you got this guy right here. Yep. And uh, yeah, this is this is uh, this guy right here is his name is Haas. This guy's name is Stro, and this guy's name is Dixon. So we got the they they have name tags, I guess you guys can see on there. So you know because they keep on singing songs that are reference to them being some sort of Avengers, and they keep on singing all these. These Irish drinking songs, and they—they're kind of just—they're off, they're kind of doing their own thing. Like the bard is playing or, music, you know but who the more you know the, which side of the bar is more interesting at this point, don't you? So, so Herc, Herc can literally. I'm kind of torn. He's got—he's got like magic drinks over here, and then we've got these guys talking about singing songs about throwing people to dumpsters. So essentially, Herc is looking literally over them because they're so small that he can still keep an eye on the door, like above them, because Herc is pretty tall himself. And imposing, but as you're as you have all this ruckus going around, you don't seem to notice that actually not from in front of you by the door, but behind you, you hear a familiar voice. Like right behind me. So from behind oh. you, you hear, "Oh my days, heck, you son of a bitch!" And uh, you turn oh. around and you see Yagra Stonefist has come from. <laughs> has come from upstairs and she greets you with a uh with a big one of those one of those big old arm shakes you know where you grab each other so uh do you uh what what do you do oh we're we're, we're clasping up dude we're 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 dapping it up i pull her so, in for a hug so she goes oh so heck, heck you son of a bitch and she goes and claps you go ahead and give me a strength check first check of the 
Let's check the campaign here. Oh, boy. oh no! Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so uh, as you recall, a critical uh, failure. As you recall, the last <laughs> time. I do a lady at a bar. <laughs> I mean, I so, think this is kind of on par for the last time I met with her. <laughs> so a lot, you, you would you would like to think that since you guys met last when you did this, she basically spun your head right around in place. It took everything you had not to get spun around. She just rolled a twenty versus your six there. So so as as she comes up, she says, "Heck, you son of a bitch!" And she you turn around there and you're kind of like caught off guard for a second. And so she she gives you that arm shake and she just spins you right in your stool. It kind of swirls around backwards and you go to face her. <laughs> um, give me a performance check to see if uh, you can play it off like you're 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 swabbed, kind of spinning around in a circle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see if you. Play <laughs> oh, no. oh, so uh, you try to. So as 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 the as it kind of swirls around in a circle, you try to like you know kind of slide your your elbow up along the bar, and you knock all the drinks over that like the two that you just ordered, plus plus the one next to it, and they all just come crashing and spilling everywhere, um, and then you just kind of play it off. It's, it's so it's so good to see you. Um, you've been working out. It, it seems. Uh, <laughs> She's like what? Wow. So Yagra's like, oh, I guess not a whole lot has changed since I saw you last. I mean. <laughs> I thought that you're a big, strong man now. With uh, what I hear about this, all this business down in um, in the Colosseum, I heard about you. It, lots of lots of battles won. Um, so many lonely nights. Uh, <laughs> but hey, we're we're here now, and it, that's all in the past, right? Right. Well, you know, I mean, I, I really felt bad about it. It wasn't right leaving you there. I was completely gutted. I mean, I wanted to bring you with me when the rest of the boys, bu uh, you know, busted me out. But you know, we had no idea where you were. I swear, my mother's life. I understand. They they shuffle us around so often that it's just to keep track of things like that. Well, I'll tell you what. Next round's on me. Turn in here's a nice geezer. He'll fix you up. Uh, I recommend the uh, the quippers and chips. They're not on the menu, but they're delicious. You like fish, right? I love it. Oi, Danny. Quips and chips. Thanks. Um, she says, yeah, try the chips. They're scrummy, isn't it? So, uh... Oh, that's the good old uh, lingo <laughs> that I love hearing from you all those years ago. So uh, they, they, they do serve you guys some fish and chips. There's like a small, looks looks to be like a small goldfish kind of thing. And it's like deep fried. And that's that's what the quippers are. Uh, they're little goldfish guys, <laughs> and they're they're kind of deep fried, and they come with some some potato chips. Do so you guys have this nice warm meal? I think Bonnie, she's like trying to you know play it off like she didn't notice you spilling shit everywhere. She's kind of like uh, not you know like she's she's wiping it up kind of casually. She's a pro, so she's like she's like there you go, darling. Like no, no thanks. <laughs> she's just like it's drenched all over the counter, but she just sets on a nice dry spot for you guys. So um, Yagra, she's she's she has to seem she has a ale in her hand. And so it's essentially her little bit of bit of brekkie, you know, a little ale for brekkie. And um, so she so she turns to you and she says, um, I I'm glad you're here. Eric. I mean, like, I, I really I honestly, I need your help. Um, things aren't the same here in the city lately. And um, I mean, you're sort of a celebrity now. We could maybe maybe we could uh, get you to, to, to join up with us. I, have you heard of the, the Zentarum, the Black uh, Network? Have I heard of the Zentarum? Uh, yes, you worked for the, um, you worked for the Xanathar Guild, and, uh, but the, the Zentarum, so the Xanathar Guild, you know the Xanathar Guild has always been, kind of run water deep, um, for, like, hundreds of years, they've been, like, in the power, and, um, but the, the Zentarum is known throughout all of Faerun as the Black Network, and, uh, they used to kind of be more fanatical, but nowadays they, they're trying to go legit, um, and so she works for the, them, and you would know them even from ten years ago. Um, when you left and you got uh, you, you got captured on that bad job, and you guys both got captured, she was uh, she was still with a uh, new new recruit at the time for the Zentarums, um, the Black Network, and you were just a new recruit for the um, Xanathar Guild. And the, even though you guys were opposite uh, members of different gangs, you guys had kind of came together when we did that uh, earlier session where we did the the Coliseum thing, and you guys fought side by side. Yeah, yes, 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 my my. By old rivals, uh, you've been with them this whole time, huh? Yeah, I mean, we're actually not that bad, really. I mean, 
Everybody thinks of us. The rivals doesn't mean that I think you're bad. In fact, uh, <clears throat> I'm not really in in uh, good good standing with my old crew either. So I'm, I'd be glad to join. All oh, right, well, that was easy. I was going to tell you the whole deal about yeah, it, like but if you're all gung ho yes, about it. Hey, listen, if you <laughs> if you're found oh, uh, I no. trust you. I I like a man who can speak softly but carry a big sword. You know? I mean, oh, you're yeah. kind of <clears throat> you're, you're well known, so I mean. I thought we hit it off on a little last night stand that we had, you know, the, the, the last, what was it? The last, <laughs> no, the one night stand, the, the, the one light last stand that we had at the arena. I, I was, uh, I was a smitten kitten. I mean, you were Hercules, Hercules. I, I hear now they, they call you that in the arena. Hercules. Is that oh, you true? About that, did you? <laughs> they say that you're strong, that's stronger than any, any man or half Orc man alive. That and you're uh, that you're, around. That you're completely unbeatable, yeah. I've heard the stories. I know you're just putting on a performance for little old me, but you don't have to hold back with your strength. We really could use you, uh, a, a guy like you. You see, things there's some bad blood again between the uh, the rivals of the city. Us and Tarams are like a mercenary guild. We're trying to go we're trying to make uh we're out here trying to make an honest living. Uh, go completely legitimate, mate. But those uh, those Xanathar guild, they're they're crazy. They're completely nutter. We were supposed to have a nice little range with them, see, but night of the deal, they say that something goes missing and all hell breaks loose. Next thing you know, we got a war on our hands and uh, we're caught in the crossfire. Zentarms already got their own problems. We don't need to be having these Xanathar thugs uh, attacking us. So Can you guys. I feel like she's talking really loud about what I consider to be sort of like stuff you should keep like, under calm wraps. Down, is, this lady. Like, <laughs> is this like everybody's kind of just ignoring it or is there any way that's like listening um, in? So I was about to say, <laughs> it's kind of well known yeah, in the city. Avengers know everything. So I was just about to say that it's well known in the city that war has recently broken out between the Xanathar Guild and the the Zentarum, you know, the Black Network. You can think, if you guys get confused, Xanathar people are generally where they wear purple, and the Black Network people are black, so the Zentarum are kind of like the Black Network. Um, so it's kind of the purples versus the blacks. And uh, there was supposed to be, like, there's been a lot of blood in the streets lately. Uh, there's been a lot of violence as these two people have clashed. And Yara, Yagra essentially tells you the story about how uh, you know, there was supposed to be a deal that was going, and at, at the last minute, uh, the, the Xanathar, who's like in charge of the guild, essentially thought that they double-crossed them and, and, and uh, stole something from them, so the deal went bad. So there's bad blood. And uh, Yagra also tells you that basically, like, the, um, the Zentarum also have kind of like a bit of a civil war going on amongst themselves already in their faction, so there's kind of like the legitimate faction of the Zentarum that are all mercenaries, and then there's kind of like the, the old roots of the, the Black Network was tied to, uh, way back in the day, there was like an evil wizard named Manshun, and they were like the fanatics of that, but they're trying to become more legit. So she tells you basically, she's like, there's no mercenary guild here. I mean, we're trying to make an honest living. You know, so she tells you basically that you know they're trying to set up this thing and but she says like basically like if you want to know all the all the all the you know the, the bits and details all the bits and bobs you can talk to Davil. he's uh he's the leader of the doom raiders you've have you heard of the doom raiders mm -hmm. yeah that's the old crew that you run with right those are those are my boys those are my mates they're the ones who got me free and uh you know they left you high and dry but you know like what you're gonna do hey, so the, <laughs> oh glad to hear it well, cheers then so she uh and does a little toast to you and clashes that. And then, um, so we're gonna we're gonna let you guys just kind of catch up a little bit. And as we uh, as you guys are doing that and catching up, and she's telling you a little bit about her crew and stuff like that. And um, she tells you that essentially Davil's Davil's there. I mean, he, if you guys look on your map, he's uh, he is there. Um, there's the group over here known as the the Doom Raiders, and uh, right there on Pingin, that blonde uh, the blonde elf. Is Davil? He's the leader of the group, and oh, you never know. I guess you have to talk to him to find out. But he's—they're uh, actually not up here right now. They are. Uh, she tells you that they are upstairs in one of the private rooms. Where if you do want to discuss the details, you should go talk to him up there at a later, at a later date, basically, or whenever you want. Like just you know, you guys are catching up right now. But she tells you, if you want to, you'll you'll find him upstairs in the, the second or third floor. 
Um, but I just put them down here so you guys can see them. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys the little handout for the Doom Raiders. They're part of the Zentarum. They represent the legit faction of it. They're like, like I said, there's no mercenary guild in the city. So, uh, that's kind of your only option. If you're, if you're a Merc, you got to work for them. Oh, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the wrong. That's why I can't find it. I was stalling for like 30 seconds there. Um, right here is the Doom Raiders. So I'll show that to you guys. So this actually includes everybody except for Yagra. Um, and from left to right, you have Davil there and some of his other members uh, of, his, of his team, the other Doom Raiders. And, uh, and, you know, she basically, you know, tells you some of the, the as she's talking to her, she tells you got some, about some of the exploits that they do. And um, you, you know that basically like they, uh, they, raid the, they raid Dooms, which is kind of like the nickname for a Lich. So you know they're actually pretty pretty good adventurers if they raid um, the, they raid dooms essentially. Uh, so they're 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 pretty good merc group. Like, like tomb raider, but doom raider. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> doom raider. <laughs> okay. Well, that being said, let's uh, let's let you you guys are gonna get caught up. And we're gonna switch over to our next character. Okay. Anybody Kate, looks you, over you, just sees like you're there, right? face just getting like less and less green and more and more red as I'm talking to her. <laughs> Yeah, she see you guys seem to she still seems to get a good impression of you. I think she's also she was impressed with you that that night when you had the epic battle because you did do you also started off very cold that evening as well, but you warmed up as you went. So she knows that you can last the night, you know, that you get better as you go. And then also <laughs> vibe check. Vibe check. Yeah, you gotta do that, the power that art reveal again. Anything is possible. <laughs> horror is on your side now. You didn't have that initially. So um what were we just saying about the, uh... You were talking about how long you last in bed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanted roleplay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you guys, when you guys met at the Coliseum, you did pretty well. So, she knows that you have a lot of potential and that you've actually... She's heard of your exploits because way down in column... You guys can find it on your maps if you go on the Feyron. It's, it's if you go down the Sword Coast and you follow it, you'll find, um, Kalimbor. And it's, uh, yeah, that's where he was. So, he actually got sent on that mission down to the down the coast and that's where they got captured it was a deal gone bad you basically Herc got framed by uh the the, the xanathar people threw him under the bus essentially because he was the half orc he fit the bill and they uh they basically screwed him over so he's uh he's there for vengeance okay all right so let's move on to our next character so uh while that's going on we're gonna we're gonna pan the camera over to mako tsunami he is a towering anthropomorphic amphibious fishman. Let me, let me uh, send you his art. I have the artworks this time. And when you say towering, you... how tall is towering? That's a good point. Kate, how tall are you? Fun. Like, you're tall for a fish guy. Well, you're you're bit. I mean, you're girthy. Look at you. I'm you're an imposing yeah. guy. With, with, <laughs> when you're in when you're in the water, yeah, let's say yeah, expand a little bit. Uh, he's a he's a big anthropomorphic amphibious fishman. And he has uh, glist glistening gold scales, and he's lingering in the shadows near the bar. He has large, expressive eyes that dart around the bustling tavern, keenly aware of the occasional sidelong glances and hushed whispers from those who've never encountered his kind before. Despite his imposing stature, Mako is not immune to the sting of judgment, the hushed taunts of being labeled a freaky fish guy echoing in his ears. Do you have ears? In your ear holes. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's canon. You have ears. <laughs> Directly from the top, it's like, hey, wait, you think that fucker has ears or not? I will say, I I've been trying to do my best to avoid eye contact while I'm just like slowly eating my fish and chips. Just like, <laughs> okay. Ah! So, yeah. just, like... You may notice that, uh, so like as, as Herc looks over, he kind of glances. Actually, give me a perception check. Um, roll a perception. Let's see if you, uh, Actually, both of you, Herc, roll a perception check to see if you notice Mako, and Mako, see if you roll a perception check to see if you notice this guy snacking on quippers. <laughs> quippers? Quippers? Oh, quippers. Quippers. Quippers, quips, and chips. Oh, yeah. that is, I'm sorry. I think your your thing's wrong. I, I've rolled three ones to <laughs> Yeah, so you you're yeah, you're just totally one. so it's okay, it's okay. Both of you guys rolled nat ones or no, it's a dirty one. Anyways, you both rolled ones, so So essentially Herc is so preoccupied Herc is so preoccupied with 
the, it being embarrassed about the whole thing and like and kind of trying to catch up and still and still be cool. He's kind of like you know he keeps on positioning himself like you know try to show off his, his biceps a little bit. He's, he's like oh yeah yeah. He's like still he's, he's still trying to like keep his game on. So he doesn't really like notice this giant fish guy who's like staring off in his general direction and kind of darting around. And and conversely, Mako doesn't seem to notice like even though he sees this guy at the bar chatting it up with this these two half orcs hitting it off at the bar, he doesn't really notice that they're eating uh, people kind of with goldfish. So. <laughs> <laughs> so uh maybe don't order that on the menu if you get a chance there mako so and actually by the way that is uh canon i didn't do the quips and chips thing that's literally what they suggest you order at the bar for this thing so uh it's pretty funny that you guys is a goldfish character i mean you're a freaky you're a fisherman you know so like yeah i don't know how freaky you want to get you want to eat your own people it's is it cannibalism? Yeah, you if if you eat you quippers, <laughs> quipper. I love you. I want you here, but why? Well, why are you here? So um, yeah, the, he's getting so Cade. So he's keenly aware of only the sidelong glance people. Um, we've never encountered his kind before. He's a lokatha, or a lokatha. Excuse me. So he is a he's a fish warrior, and they they all have. There's a wide diversity of different types. He just so happens to be a, a, that of a goldfish. Um, sort of quipper-like, really, fish guy. So, he has a he has a cloak draped around his broad shoulders, trying to conceal himself a bit. Um, his demeanor conveys both a hint of vulnerability and a desire for anonymity. He wants to be anonymous. Uh, he keeps a close eye on Maloon War Dragon, which you guys can actually see over here. Sit at the bar. He's got the sandy blonde hair and the uh, beard. And so he keeps close close eye on Maloon, his newfound friend. Uh, finding solace in the recent camaraderie that they've formed in this unfamiliar world above the waves. Maloon also knows what it means to be from a small fishing village, and Mako muses if he too might one day be a great hero like the war dragon and all. Because Maloon's last name was Dragon. So uh, Mako, see, he's carefully situated himself in the uh, one that allows him to maintain a waffle eye on both the doorway and Maloon, uh, whose presence offers a sense of familiarity and comfort amongst the boisterous crowd. As he grapples with the stereotypes that loom over his people, Lokatha have like a reputation of being like forgetful, uh, akin to the memory of a goldfish, and uh, that serves as a bit of a reminder of the misjudgments that he must constantly endure. Because everybody seems to think he's unintelligent, but really he's quite smart. Uh, despite his social awkwardness, Miko knows that within these crowded balls lies the potential for great adventure, where he can prove the true essence of the, the, the true essence of fishing like him sends a consistent stereotype. Right, so uh, as you sit there uh, amidst this boisterous chatter. Uh, you're focusing inward and you're getting an asylum conversation with your patron, Mako. So, uh, this is this is us talking with the patron of Mako. He says, you hear a voice, says, Mako. Mako, can you hear me? Who's that? I say in my head. You've known me as the ocean in the past, but I have a name. My name is Nami, which means the spirit of the ocean, roughly. You know, if you to look it up in a library, you perhaps. You are ocean. You are ocean. Yes. Ah, okay. Your name is Tsunami. My name is Ni. You can call me Pharaoh of the Sea if it suits you better. Or just Ocean. Pharaoh of the Sea. I like it. Mako, uh, this is this is a great opportunity for you to watch the world. I, I've given you these amazing abilities to help you with your people. And it's time for you to rise. The rising of the Lokatha is upon us. How are you doing? How are you? How are you holding up there? <laughs> I'm uh, a bit shaken, I won't lie. But uh, you see, Ocean, I'm not quite sure yet if I'm ready to raise my sails and proceed forward, as you could say. Uh, that is I'm right, my child. You are upon rocky waters, but I'll serve as a guiding current for you in the troubling times to come. That is very comforting. Please. Have my waters be calm, and my bounty many. Yes, these are uncharted waters for you, Mako. And though the ocean may be vast, yet within it dwells countless wondrous creatures. Remember, the heart of the ocean pulses within you, and it is through you its power shall flow. This guy's, this guy's good. He's quite the, quite the orator. Shall flow, you say, like water. Like water. Yes, the ocean does not abandon its children. You're never adrift, for I am the current that guides you. You are Nami. This is very appropriate. You shall guide me 
and help me. I see you. Thank he, he, you. I see you staring at the the the. <laughs> not at the quippers, that's for sure. Uh, you seem to be preoccupied with the the looks of these these other people. Do you do you feel their eyes on you? I can sense that you're at unease. Yes, I'm very at unease, Ocean. I see their gazes around me. They look at me like I am, but a simple fisherman. Yes. Well, they. In in time, they will come to know your strength, not just in the waters, but in your heart and mind. You are adaptable. You are my chosen one. Embrace the journey and let it shape you. You must be like water, my friend. You put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You must, uh, you must first empty your cup, Mako, so that you may learn all of the wonders of this world. And um, uh, that's where I come in. So, um, Basically, you guys have this internal monologue. Uh, he seems to be giving you basically pep talks. Every time he talks to you, he seems to give you like a quote about the sea. And he keeps on talking about something called the heart of the yards, which is like, essentially, you're, you guys are like building a ship together and he, you have to build a good foundation. And he's the spine of the ship. You got to build it plank by plank. Like he's like a shipwright that guides you. And um, each plank of wood forms the ship. And in that shipyard, you will lay down a good foundation, and uh, you must believe in the heart of the yards. The heart of the yards? All right, yes. Nami, I'm gonna trust myself to you and your wise sage advice. I'm so glad that I am able to captain the ship with such a fine current like you. All right, seems like the pep talk seems to be working. But essentially, you guys just kind of, you're kind of recapping, basically, the uh, the Lokatha people have been, uh, historically, been enslaved a lot. They've been pretty good about it. <laughs> For the most part, that's their only kind of a, uh, the take that they have on most of the source books that you guys have read in libraries. You hear that uh, Lokatha, typically enslaved, but good sports about it, really. Um, but, you know, it's possibly time for them to get some, uh, some, uh, work their way back up in the world. So that's kind of why Mako's here is uh, to kind of uh, help out his people. He's on a mission to kind of go forth and his patron is, is kind of guiding him and giving him more confidence as he, you know, begins to falter a bit. Okay. So, okay. So as you guys do that, um, we're going to go to our next character. We're going to go to uh, Bia. Okay. There, there you go. go. You should be uh, visible now. So, go ahead and step through that door, the first step that you're taking into the Yawning Portal. And you guys should be able to see her uh, artwork now as well. As the door to the Yawning Portal swings open, a figure of striking duality steps in, emerging from the veil of her iridescent black and blue sorcerer's cloak. The half-drow known as Fia carefully un unveils her elven ears to the establishment's dim-lit interior. As she breathes a sigh of relief, the overcast skies What's that? Yeah. Sorry, I was just doing the sigh. Oh, doing the sigh. She has a sigh. That was a good sigh. Yeah, no, that's good. So you're, you're glad to be inside because uh, it's an overcast spring day, providing you relief from the harshness of the direct sunlight, a gentleness that the light sensitive skin on you appreciates. But inside and close to the undermountain, uh, she feels at home once again. She has a medium skin tone, which is a, a testament to her heritage's intermingling. It's a um, half drow, half human mix, correct? Like a, on your, a drow on your father's side. And uh, that dark skin tone is accentuated by the subtle ombre cascade of your long silver hair, which is meticulously braided and woven with ornate knives that serve as both hairpins and elegant sharp edged adornments. These knife hairpins entwine with her locks in a manner reminiscent of blooming roses. The blades of vibrant green serving as thorns and handles intricately adorned in the pattern of blue roses. With each step, the delicate jingle of the blades creates a rhythm that marks her entrance as she moves with a dancer's elegance across the room. So you can go ahead and, and start moving a little bit towards the bar area if you want. <laughs> hey man, it's a whole nother, she's in a whole nother league. So, uh, 
I mean, you, between the two guys, oh, you can stay right there. It's good. Guys, I'm about to, you're scanning the room right now, essentially. As her, as your deep violet eyes scan the inn's interior, her gaze, though sharp and focused, holds a glimmer of anticipation, for she enters the yawning portal with a purpose. Guided you by an. ask about, like, those halflings right next to you. Yeah, so you can so you see the. So yeah, you see, so talking. she's on a mission, and uh, you uh, you're here for it with a purpose. Uh, you've been guided by an encoded message from your childhood friend Isvel Rosenar, uh, from the Rosenar family, and uh, Fia's heart carries the weight of her own quest for identity and the aspirations of House Rosenar. And now, in the dim ambiance of the yawning portal inn, she steps forward. Her silver hair catching glimmers of light as her eyes search for a friend whose message bore the promise of a newfound purpose. Um, she sees Herc and Yagra. She sees the halflings. She also sees kind of like, as she's scanning across, she sees kind of like a guy, uh, a large fisherman, a goldfish, like, kind of brings himself a little bit under her breath. Um, and he, he kind of catches the uh, bee. She hasn't seen her friend in a long time, but it's someone that sort of seems to be kind of like uh, a long child, child friend, Isabel. And uh, there's a map. So you, you, you spot you spot your friend as well. Uh, what do you do? I I'm allowed to go that far right now, right? Okay. Yep, you can move anywhere you want. I think if you try to jump down the well, there might be a wall that stops you. But other than that, I think you can go anywhere you want. I'll just casually walk over to her. Okay, so you're gonna walk directly towards her. Yes. As you walk across the bar. You seem to be this place is packed full of people going. So you you start to make your way around the well. And, uh, but as you do, you bump into a man wearing a large trench coat. And he seems to be also making his way back from the bar as well. But he doesn't seem to really have any distinct features that you can make out. Uh, he's, um, he's, he's carrying two large pints of ale. And they kind of slosh around and spill on the floor a little bit. And so, how do you, how do you react to bumping into this guy? Also, give me a, give me a, give me a perception check. Like that. There we go. 12? So you, as you bump into this guy, um, it doesn't really feel very like solid when you bump into him. It kind of like seems a bit disjointed a little bit, and um, you know his his face is kind of, of, of hidden a little bit. And you kind of you, you do you like a, apologize to him, or you I mean, what what, what do you do? Uh, you just you just kind of bump into him. What would, what would Fia do? Uh, he's a little shocked at first. I just step back and say, oh, I apologize, and I look at him and try and. Get a little read on him. Keep an okay. eye on him. So, yeah, he kind of looks like an old guy, like from a, one of those noir movies. So, but, you know, uh, if noir exists mm -hmm. in Feyrun. Anyways, you, you can't quite see that. Like, even though you kind of apologize and look at him and he kind of uh, glances at you from underneath his... He's actually wearing kind of like a... Unlike that picture, he's not wearing the hat. He's wearing kind of like a cloak. You look at him, but you don't quite seem to be able to make out his face. It's a bit strange. But then you hear from um, from afar, you hear, uh, Thea! Thea, is that you? And um, you you make eye contact with Isvel again. And when you do, you look back, and the man in the trench coat seems to have disappeared back into the crowd. There's a lot of people in the bar. What do you do? So you just heard what you think is Isvel gonna... calling out to you. You hear, Thea, it sounds like, it sounds like it has a sort of like a, a Latina kind of vibe to it, like Italian or Spanish or something. You're not quite sure. You know, because it's, 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 you know, those places don't exist in this world, so. As well does? Uh-huh. Wait, sorry. You just blip for a second. You said that as well has an Italian Latino vibe. Is that what you said? Yeah, so you kind of, you recognize her voice because it's very distinct. She, uh, she says, is Bella? <clears throat> I'm just going to make a note of this strange hand in my head and remember that for later. And just keep in mind as a little yellow flag. And then I will... Uh, quickly, but cautiously, walk over to Ismail, my friend. Okay, you can totally do that. Don't ever wear a trench coat in a bar. <laughs> can I, trench coat can I do that? Walk over to a friend? Did you say I can do what, that? Yes? What, yeah, you so you make your way through the bars sure. with people kind of still having it to the side of you. There's people singing and being, making merry. The, the place is just full of, uh, full of adventures and, and a rowdy bunch. They're making merry. Oh, you know, you know whatever you want to is she one of these two people over here? So you see that over there in the flickering glow of this one of these famous kind of fireplaces. This one particularly is a troll that seems to be screaming because of the fire in its yawning mouth. Next to her is a bard. You recognize him, but you haven't seen him since you were young. He's known as Three Strings. And uh, he's he's not pay playing particularly well, uh, but you know, he only has three strings to his guitar and he seems to be very proud of that. 
and he's trying to like impress her with some songs, but she, she was, when you see her, she was, um, oh, somebody playing guitar. Did you know the president of the United States of America, they have three strings in their guitar and they play like motherfuckers. So he hears three strings and he's, he's strumming along there. I was going to say, I almost, I almost, I almost can hear it. <laughs> I almost hear the guitar. I know. I was, like, really? I was joking about this, but it's like, we're really good. <laughs> so, um, actually, okay, um, so you hear, I hear the barn. So, so yeah, you see, and you, so first you see the bar before you see her, and then you look up, and she's actually, he's playing to her, and she's got, she's sitting on top of the mantel place of the fireplace with her feet dangling. When she sees you, she goes, she waves fervently, like, hello, like, feel like me. It, it's a spell. Okay. So, um, I continue walking over to her. I want to walk over and greet her. her. Yeah, so she hops down off the fireplace. How do you want to greet her? Do you want a, a, the, the handshake? Uh, she's just coming to look like she's about to get a, a big old hug. Yeah, I'm a hug person. I like she's, a, she's my friend. I'm so you guys hugger. meet together in a warm embrace, and the years yeah. seem to, to melt off a little bit. And over a decade since she's seen you, um, and you recognize her as the, the house, the, the now the face of House Rosenar, one of the great houses of Waterdeep. And uh, you guys have each since you were a kid, and you're just starting, uh, you were just like preteens kind of thing, and uh, you've come back, yeah. and she says, look at you! The, 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 the big event, you know, she says with an Italian accent, but... Um, she's like, uh, it's a Miss Villa. <laughs> you know, it's like, it has been so long since I've seen you. It's been so long. You look so wonderful. Yeah, so she's actually, so, so she's wearing a uh, long, like, flowing dress of uh, black and blue with some rose patterns around it. And she looks very much, uh, very ladylike, especially since she's, saw her, she's always a bit of a tomboy, but now she seems to, uh, still the same features. She has, like, sort of also kind of a medium skin tone, like a slightly darker colored skin. Um, you guys actually look pretty close to one another, um, cause she kind of hails more from the Amnian, uh, side of things, whereas your mother was, uh, had paler skin. She looks to be the, the face of, of House of Rosnar now, but, uh, you never really could have been the the leader of house rosenar because of your half drow heritage so though you guys look same she has the dark skin she never really had the same kind of uh biases like when you guys ran next to each other they would they would uh you know treat you the same but when as soon as they saw the elf ears for you it just kind of brings back all those memories of uh kind of why you kind of left to find some of your own way um some of the discrimination you guys had a, a very good bond during your youth so uh, I just imagine you guys just get, kind of get caught up there. In the moment, you reconnect, and she kind of fills you in, and she's like, come, come, you know, like, she she wants to show you the, uh, uh discuss something very urgent with you about uh, a particular item, and she says, I have it. You have it? Where is well, it? Show me. I, I guess I don't really have it, but I know where it is. Uh, it, it, here, come, let's let's talk to a private table and we'll we'll discuss it. So you guys kind of go off to the side of the bar, towards the top there, where there's you know talk by the fireplace. Uh, you know, three strings is still playing. It's just three strings, and uh, you guys kind of catch up there. Okay. Should I go like more up here somewhere? Like right yeah, there? you can go up to the top okay. there. Okay hide away here you gotta be in the corner so nobody hears us talking about it gotta be all secretive all right cool yep so you guys start to kind of catch up and she tries to get you caught up on things and as as she does that um in the meantime we're going to cut back to uh herc and those guys so while this is all happening um yagra has been been chatting up with you when um she uh no i swear what? this guy was like eight feet tall i just cleaved his <laughs> ankles right I'm down sorry. From hey i'm gonna Tell you, the gruel that they were feeding us every single night was honestly not that bad. With a little bit of salt, I think you could, <laughs> it, it was manageable. <laughs> nice. But nothing like these. What, what you call them? Creeping cheeks? The qu mm. qu ah, the crips and chips. The scrummy. Oh, delicious. He's like, I don't. She kind of whispers to you guys, like, I don't, I don't know about that bloke over there, though. He looks like a bit dodgy to me. You don't suppose they're his cousins or something? Like his mates? Oh my god, he's talking to himself. Should we be worried about that? Does that happen often here? Well, there's, a, there's all sorts of people here. You, you, you can't really judge, you know? You gotta just keep your head down, focus on yourself. You never know uh, what could happen next, so... I apologize for eating this in front of him. He, he seems to be a bit preoccupied himself. I think he's alright. I just sit there chatting with Yara, wrapping up your, your great stories, and maybe uh, your stomach is grumbling a little bit as you realize you may have just eaten this guy's children. <clears throat> Where's the children, man? Uh, you, uh, 
you, you, Yagra seems to be like mid sentence with you when she kind of stops and looks over in this general direction towards this guy, this Jason Statham looking kind of dude. And she goes, Oh, one second, love. She downs her drink, sl you know, uh, slams down the table and just says, uh, Just got to go powder my nose. And she goes over here. And there seems to be like a group of guys that are all dressed in purple. Several of them have shaved heads, like bald heads. And she kind of comes up to the table of these guys and they seem to be telling a story and, and laughing, kind of like a, like a cackling almost. And the guy seems to be reenacting a story where he seems to be pummeling someone. And uh, she goes up, Yagra comes up to them. She says, boy, have a laugh, are we? She takes the guy's head, slams it into the table. Blood goes gushing from his nose. And uh, it's all roll for initiative. Oh no! <laughs> Wait, me? What do you mean all? I want you yeah. all to roll for initiative. <laughs> And so that's where we're going to end today's episode with a cliffhanger as Yagra Stonefist has thrown the gauntlet literally by throwing some dude across the, ru the room there, um, starting a bar brawl fight within the, the yawning portal, which will be interesting because of uh, Dernan's special rules that he has for, for fighting. But we will see some combat next episode as our characters have all rolled for initiative, meaning they're going to start their first combat encounter within this campaign. Well, as you can see, our characters are going to get into more than just a bar fight in the next episode as they introduce some of the other characters. We introduce Scott's character and Ian also gets to uh, join into the fray as they uh, take over some of these halflings and they try to take out the trash. But by doing that, by doing this bar fight, they're kind of right in the middle of this ancient well that is right in the middle of the, the bar. So we're going to see um, what they manage to sort of unearth or uh, rouse with all of these rambunctious festivities that are happening within the Yawning Portal. And we have so much more in store for you guys as our adventurers get their first main quest to try to find a missing person. When that happens, they're going to get thrown all over the Waterdeep uh, map as they try to explore the city and they encounter all sorts of crazy uh, creatures and NPCs that they have to interact with and a lot of fan, fan favorite uh, moments that are coming up. And uh, here's a quick preview of those and then we'll get on to the next episode here of Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Well, well. Seems like we got a new contender for the ugliest mug in the Yawning Portal. And as he says this, the sword that's been mounted above the, par the, the bar pulls free from its bindings and soars across the air into his outstretched hand. Rears up from the well, slowly revealing... The ring. Slowly. <laughs> it is the ring. It's a, it's a little girl with black hair. You tear back the curtain, and as you look over, you see there's there seems to be a man in a trench coat. But as he turns around, he just goes and gets completely blindsided by this little screaming halfling that comes out, barrels into him with the point of his head, and he goes flying back 10 feet into this dumpster. Yo, Darren trashes out. Darren, what the hell is going on down there? I'm trying to enjoy my drink as it sounds like a Karen. Okay, so she's explaining <laughs> to Durham. <laughs> so would you like to speak to, speak to the manager? Uh, hello, I'm Herm Thradden, uh, a half-orc paladin of horror. The H-O-A-R, not the other kind. Uh, <laughs> you know, tall, buff, muscular, your average orc, uh, some say a little bit more handsome than others, perhaps. Um, <laughs> I spent ten long years in the arenas of blood, fought my way to victory. Not something many can claim, but now I'm free and looking for work. Your class, your race, all that stuff. My name is Zar. Zar Far. My mother named it made, named me that after I gave her a hell of a time coming out, you know what I'm saying? We don't need to start from the very beginning, Zar. What the <laughs> hell is <laughs> anyway. tell us about your your race, your background and why you're in water deep? <laughs> I'm a kobold. What's with the flashlight? What's with the questions? You ask too many questions. Who are you? My name is Fia, and I don't have an accent because I grew up around here, and I'm half human and half drow elf. My mother was from House Razana, and my father was from House Averdenar. I don't know how to say that. The one and, that starts with an A. Uh, Avendar. Yes, was from House A, Avendar. There we go. Recently, I heard from my friend Esfel that 
she heard some whispers of where this heirloom might be. So I am now in Waterdeep to touch base with her and see if I can find where that heirloom is and where my father might have gone. My name is Mako Tsunami and I am a warlock from Waterdeep Harbor. Did Cade just disappear for everybody? <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Mako and fuck all y'all. <laughs> I, uh, I can tell I'm gonna love Mako. <laughs> I have, have the best, over, greatest <laughs> personality ever, okay? And don't you question it. I am a legendary fisherman. Can I just say this about Cade's uh, Mako? Sure. He, he sounds like anime Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> He's like, I'm a, I'm a fish, okay? And like, so I was in the ocean, right? But I was right in the now. ocean, but then things happened within the ocean. That you do not, it cannot it comprehend. So <laughs> the treasure to be found is a map that no man can see. If there's one thing that we know about our fishy Tarantino, he's really into fins. <laughs> oh, yes, I am, her. Yes, I am. Very into fins indeed. It's like, a, it's like quipping Tarantino. 